Uh, you know, guys, another topic that comes up, uh, fairly or unfairly, I guess in sports everything's fair, but uh, is Bruce Boudreau. Uh, Bill, you know him better than I do. I remember him from a long time ago. Anytime I've had the pleasure to interview him, especially, you know, uh, on the fan many times, uh, down to earth, he's funny as hell. Christ, he, he, and he, no one's more self-effacing uh, than Bruce Boudreau talking about his role in, uh, you know, in Slapshot and, you know, uh, having a small bit part in the movie. But anyway, the, the, the point that comes up for discussion is you look at his tenure in Washington. Now in Anaheim, people uh, wonder, okay, is there, is, in spite of his great regular seasons, he's had several of those with the Caps and now with Anaheim, is there something missing in terms of, you know, getting one of his teams to the top, to a cup final and winning it? And again, that sounds unfair, because uh, he seems to be a very good coach, a real good guy, and yet there's that one thing missing. Bru uh, Bill, I was going to ask you, is that, from in your perspective, a point of uh, kind of curiosity in terms of Gabby? Yeah, I think it has to be. Uh, because, A, he's, he's as knowledgeable a hockey person as I know. He loves the game. He is who he is. He can't become a Mike Keenan overnight. So he has to have the kind of people that will respond to his, uh, uh, I don't know how you would describe it, because I do think his, Bruce his is persona. a good coach. But I also think, Norm, that if I'm running the operation, i got to say to myself, I'll give Bruce one more chance, because he and Bob Murray are relatively close, and uh, let's see how he does. But I would say that this is Bruce's last chance, and uh, you can ask the Duchess. I mean, every game that Anaheim plays, I worry about how Bruce does. I'm as concerned privately as you have expressed publicly, Norm. This becomes, like last November, I tweeted on my Twitter account to uh, Ray Cheryl, Ray, fire Dan Bilesman while you've got a chance before you have to clean up the mess at the end of the first or second round. And, of course, he didn't listen because he didn't, uh, uh, he wasn't uh, involved with my Twitter account, nor did he give a damn. But <laughs> I, I saw Bilesman's coaching as being relatively ineffective. And I've had a lot of people who know more about this game than I amplify that feeling since Shiro got fired because there is no question, and I say this without any equivocation, Dan Bilesma will never coach another game in Pittsburgh. He is done like dinner. Yeah, I would uh, definitely agree with that. I still, for the life of me, have no idea why they didn't fire Bilesma along with Cheryl. I don't know why they're, why they're waiting for the new GM just to come in and say, okay, yeah, Bilesma, you're gone. Uh, why keep him around the club for the next couple of weeks, well, whatever the timeline may be, when he knows he's a dead man walking? The entire sport knows it. And out of fairness to both, there are jobs available in the general manager's market and in the coaching market. Shiro has a chance in the general manager's market. Bilesma has none in the coaching. So why, I guess maybe, I, I don't know, uh, Carl, and I, I, I just, when it happened, I thought, well, what's this all about? Are they trying to embarrass Shiro by saying, okay, you, we feel, the ownership group, that you are responsible for this mess. You hired Bilesma. You wouldn't, uh, you know, you, you've not given... Crosby any protection over the years no. you've maneuvered a trade deadline and not been able to accomplish anything and more importantly a team if, if, if Bruce Boudreaux's future is in doubt then then why is Dan Bilesma still sitting uh, in, in Pittsburgh I mean I, I I I just can't understand why the timing was such other than the ownership and I don't think they would do this to Ray are going to say okay Ray we're firing you because we feel that you are principally responsible for the mess that we're in. Okay. To tie this back into Boudreaux, I mean, how many more chances can you give the guy? And I guess the hard question is, is that does he have the temperament? We know he's you know, a, a very nice guy, a very self-effacing guy, a very humorous guy. Does he have the temperament to, to turn these guys into winners at the NHL level? Of course, he's won in the ECHL. He's won in the AHL. 
but uh, when uh, we were talking about possible replacements for biosma, we said, oh, we need a, a guy like Iron Mike, you know, someone who's a disciplinarian. Is that what it takes to succeed to coach at the NHL level, Bill? Well, I think when you have the personnel that Pittsburgh has, and Anaheim's not too far behind, I might add, Carlin. Mm -hmm. One thing I would never do to a friend is comment about his future uh, behind his back. And whether it's on radio, television, or both, I'm hoping that Bruce, Bruce Boudreaux can win. And when I say win, win the second round, get into the conference final, that's what I was hoping for this year. What happened this year is they lost faith in Hiller. They had two rookie goaltenders in net. Who were they trying to kid? Yeah. You know, it was. It, and were those Bruce's decisions? I guess they were. But they were Bob Murray's decision in principle. He traded just uh, that fast guy to Edmonton, who was better than either of the kids. Mm -hmm. So, retrospectively, there's more people to blame than Bruce. But to answer your question honestly, and without uh, me leading on my friendship with Boudreaux to make something sound good, uh, Bruce is nearing the end. He, he's got to he's got to get something going into the third round, or there will be no reason to keep him. And just to your point about coaches and their persona, uh, coincidence or not, quite often coaches who win a championship and coaches who win several championships do have that over-the-top edge. It doesn't mean you always see it, but I'm sure, for example, when Joel Quenville, who uh, uh, Bill would remember as a young Toronto Maple Leaf back in 1979 from the Windsor Spitfires, but Joel Quenville, I'm sure when he has something to say, it's done in private and probably a pretty strong couple of comments or words, and he probably doesn't have to say a whole lot. Uh, I'm sure Claude Julien, he's very good at being guarded, what he says about his team in public, but I'm sure behind closed doors, he needs something to say. He probably can ring somebody's eardrum pretty good. And if you want to go back into dynastic coaches, uh, I don't have to tell Bill. He knows this like the back of his hand. But, you know, Carl, uh, players, I mean, you know, uh, Steve Shutt, the, the all-time great Montreal uh, Canadian with that dynastic Habs club that Scotty coached to uh, uh, five championships uh, back in the 70s. Uh, Steve Shutt has this funny expression which tells it all about, you know, that kind of over-the-edge relationship in terms of tough and mean and high expectations that a coach has with his players in order to get it to a championship and win it. Steve Shutt's expression was, 364 days of the year, the Montreal Canadiens hated Scotty Bowman. On the 365th day, they got their Stanley Cup rings. That probably answers your question. Yeah, I don't think there's any question to that. And uh, that's, that's why we mentioned Mike Keenan in Pittsburgh. I mean, you can, you can argue that Pittsburgh have missed five opportunities to win cups based on the personnel they've had. And that's why they have to change it. You can't say that about Anaheim yet. But they're in a position where now there's going to be three coming up. And uh, you get over the hill... You get to the top of the mountain and start sliding down the other side. You say, how the hell do I stop this now? And that's a consideration that I think um, uh, Bob Murray, who, as you recall, he hired Boudreaux within, oh, I don't know, 20 days, 10 days of being fired in Washington. He knows Boudreaux. Boudreaux brings a special element to the game, and he's got to, he's got to win. He's got to win two rounds in the playoffs, no matter how good I think he is no matter how, uh, how much of a compassionate, understanding, knowledgeable hockey guy he is, if he doesn't win the second round in 15, 14-15, then he'll be looking for work. 